Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rock Science YouTube channel. Today's tutorial will look at RS data, which is used for analyzing and determining the strength envelopes and other parameters of your rock and soil materials. RS data builds off the legacy of rock data, and it takes it further with the added capability to analyze soil materials. This tutorial will walk you through how to perform rock data functions in the new RS data user interface. We'll do this by looking at a parallel comparison between the two programs, and through this, we'll see what's changed, what's the same, and what other new features RS data has to offer. For this tutorial, we'll be looking at the Westerly Granite file, which we have open in Rock Data. This file contains four sets of triaxial data for four types of granite materials. What we'll be doing is duplicating this data and their analysis in RS Data. We'll begin by creating a new project in RS Data. To do this, click on the New Project icon and select the Rock template. You should now see the default rock material that has been created. We'll change the name of the default material template to the same thing in rock data, Westerly Granite Brace. To change the name, select the template in the visibility tree. You'll see a field appear in the properties pane where you can change the name. This properties pane allows you to edit other aspects of the rock material and test data. All you have to do is select an item in the visibility tree and different options will appear in the properties pane. This is the fundamental difference in the workflow between the two programs. The goal of this is to make editing faster and easier by keeping most of your work on one screen instead of opening up numerous dialogues. The new user interface is also meant to make the interoperability between the rock science programs even more seamless. RS Data's new UI integrates with programs like RS3, Slide3, and EX3, and this consistency makes learning the rock science suite easier. Now click on Material Model Rock in the visibility tree to see the options below. Like we do in rock data, we're going to curve fit the data to a particular strength type. In this example, we'll curve fit the data to the generalized Hook Brown strength criteria. Clicking on the drop down, you'll see the same strength criterions available in rock data are also available in RS data, including generalized Hook Brown, Barden Bandis, and Moore Colum. The top four options in the drop down are what we fit strength data to now. In the future, RS data will be adding even more strength criteria. Go ahead and select the generalized Hook Brown curve in the properties panel. Like we did before, we'll change the name of the rock material to the same name as the template, Westerly Granite Brace. For defining the generalized hook brown curve, we have the option of GSI, MI, and D, or MB, S, and A. We'll use the second option of MB, S, and A. Now if we go back to the visibility tree, we'll see an option called failure state. This is where the triaxial test data is stored. This allows us to analyze strength data in a manner similar to what we have in rock data. We're actually going to copy the data from rock data into the RS data section. To do that, select the state one. Change the name to brace lab data. For the test type, make sure triaxial test is selected. If we were copying other types of data, we could use this dropdown to select that. Go back to rock data and then copy and paste the data from the table into the properties pane in RS Data. If you don't want to copy and paste, there's also an option to import data from a spreadsheet. But for this example, we'll just copy the cells. Next, we want to plot the curve fit strength for the data. But how do we do that in RS Data? Well, in RS data, curve fitting is now referred to as calibration. It's called calibration instead of curve fitting now because as we add more strength models for soil and rock, some of those go beyond just strength envelope for the triaxial data. With RS data, we'll now be able to add all sorts of data types into our analysis. Right click on the template name and click apply calibration. The calibration will show up in the tree. Select it to see the options in the properties pane. 
Of these options, you'll see many are similar to what we have in rock data when curve fitting. For this example, we'll copy exactly what we have in rock data. Under Algorithm, select Modified Cuckoo. For Error Summation, select Basic. And for Error Type, we select Absolute. Right away below, you see the curve fit data in the table. As you can see, this whole process is very similar to what was done in rock data, but now we have improved charts to show the curve fitting. The material table has also improved greatly. It includes all of the same data we used to have in a very similar layout, but more data is now provided. This includes the hook brown classification, our fitted parameters, and rock mass parameters, just like in rock data. But now it also shows data like the failure range envelope. In rock data, this data wouldn't have been shown when you were looking at lab data. Instead, you'd have to switch tabs to see that. RS data has made it easier by putting it all in one spot. Now that we're done with the first material, we can add the second using many of the same steps as before. To add the second material, click on Add Materials and select Rock Template, since we're adding a rock material. If we were adding a soil material, we'd select the soil template. Name this template Westerly Granite while we're sick and brace. Now click on the material and change the name to the same as the template. Once again, we'll use the generalized hook brown, but leave the defined by as the default option. You'll see for this new material that the failure state has automatically added a new state, state two, which is our triaxial data. If you want to add more than one failure state to a material, you can do so easily by right-clicking on the failure states and selecting the option. For now, we'll just select state two and change the name to Walworsic and Brace Lab Data. Copy and paste the data over from Rock Data like before. Now we'll calibrate again by going to the template, right-clicking, and selecting Apply Calibration. Select the calibration. Once again, we'll use the settings from Rock Data. These are similar to the ones from before. Algorithm is still modified cuckoo. Air summation is basic, but this time the air type we'll use is relative. And as you can see, that gives us our best curve fit. Now if we take a moment to look at the values in the table, you'll note that the results in RS data and rock data are exactly the same. To add the next two materials, we would just repeat exactly what we did before. For this tutorial, we're going to skip ahead to show you a few more features that RS data has to offer. Everything we've seen so far in this tutorial has shown the similarities between the programs, but what about the new tools in RS data? For that, we look to the Stress Paths tab. We haven't put any stress paths in yet, so the charts are empty, but already you can see how useful this tab can be for calibrating and observing the behavior of strength models, particularly soil strength models. To explore this option, let's go back to the Strength tab and look at another feature of RS data called test simulations. To add a test simulation, right-click on the first material and select Apply Test Simulations. This option allows you to see what your different properties mean for the strength curve slash stress strain curve. When you select Apply Test Simulation, it asks you to choose a test. The default is test one, which we'll select. 
the test simulation has been added to the tree as test one. If we click on test one, we'll see the details in the properties pane below. Select triaxial test data for the plotting. For each test you do, you can specify the confining stress. Why do we do this? Even though we've calibrated, we may want to do a thought experiment. What will I see if I test this material under certain confining stress? For example, let's set the confining stress to 10, and the initial k note is 1. For the maximum strain over which we'll test, we'll specify a small value. In this example, we're only interested in elastic strain, so we'll enter 0.01. Now we'll test the material. To see what it looks like on the strength curve and in some other curves, we'll look at the stress paths. Switch back to the Stress Path tab. These are the stress paths based on the parameters we selected. If we want, we can also animate the stress path using the Animation tab. Now let's do another test. What if we want to see failure? In the first instance, we looked at elastic region, but now we want to see the behavior in the plastic failure region. What happens when we reach peak and go into post-peak? To see this, we'll go back and add another test simulation. Change the confining strain to 30. And to see post-peak behavior, we'll change the maximum strain to 0.1, aka 10%. Once again, we'll animate to see what happens. You can use the drop-down to switch between the tests. In test 2, we see the higher confining stress and higher strength envelope. Observing this, we can see the peak was the same as the residual strength. Now why is this? If we click on the material in the visibility tree, we see the answer. The set residual to peak option is checked. When we uncheck this, we can adjust the post-peak strength value. So go ahead and uncheck the box, and then enter a lower value into the residual parameter field, in this case, 2. Then enter S as 0.01 and A as 0.6. Now let's animate it and once again choose test 2. We see due to confinement, both the peak and post-peak strength get higher. Thank you for watching this tutorial on Rock Data and RS Data. We hope you now learn some new skills for performing your own strength and stress material analysis. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can check out our many playlists on the Rock Science YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified every time a new video is released, and follow us on social media for the latest Rock Science updates. See you next time!